Ajay Shivastav joins us now. Ajay, I'm in Delhi and trust me, it's chilly. It is really, really chilly and chillier than what I actually thought. Well, it's good. I think finally we have a winter and I think that's good for the industry per se. And, uh, you know, let's enjoy at least some part of the winter. It's already December and it's the first good day. And um, I'm sure investors are also getting a little chilly wind from what the portfolios look like. Well, you know, with seasons, you know that the winter is not going to last long. It's going to be winter and summer and then winter again. With markets, I'm not so sure when this chill will get over, looking at the price action and the kind of valuations we are setting at. You know, you know, again, you know, it's typical to be pessimistic when it goes down, optimistic when it goes up. But as you rightly said, the market reality was staring in the face that we were overvalued by a fair margin and market always find the reason to correct. You know, this could, could be COVID in China, could be anything else. So market is sensible. It does correct. And the good part for investors is we have been saying for the last six months is no hurry to buy. You'll get your shares at a good price. Balance the portfolio, but just like the winters, you know, you drop the winter clothes when summer comes, you need to drop some portfolio choices when they meet your target. Uh, the trick in the market now is do your booking of profit. I think, you know, that's the lesson coming of last two years is, is no point holding the share from point to point. You never make money at the end of the day. So I think the good part is follow the winter. When the spring comes, you get a new wardrobe the same way. When the spring comes, get your share portfolio, a new look and follow the weather pattern as they go along. So I think churning portfolios quarterly, six monthly is now the order of the day. There is no point holding on and ever and ever in a stock is not going to give you any returns. So where, where have you shed clothes or change your portfolio? And where are you preparing your portfolio for uh, the summer and the spring? See, one place where we keep adding up on every correction is strangely you'll find is commodities. That is the place there are very few companies, both locally and globally, and we keep adding on when we find there's a decent correction in the market. And that's one clothing which we'll not give up. We'll keep adding up. Maybe it's called a winter coat, maybe it's called a summer coat, but we will hold on to that portfolio very clearly. What we don't like and we dislodged completely was consumer durables. We didn't like it at all. We still don't like it. You know, India is a K-shaped recovery at the end of the day. And now you've seen the limitations of K-shaped recovery coming up with the announcement by the government saying, I'm going to go free food grants to 81 crore people out of population of 120 crore. That means almost 60% of the population of India needs free food grains. If that is a level in the economy, then you cannot expect the economy to grow beyond 5 6%. And at 6% growth rate, consumer durables cannot be the great place to be. Same is cement sector. <clears throat> Huge capacity expansions. We have shed everything on cement. And the demand is going to be muted because real estate will come down. No matter who says what, very big guys in HFC have said, no, no, interest rates are pointless. Demand will keep going up. No, gentlemen, interest rate will hurt people, EMIs. Real estate demand will come down with a gap. So I think cement is one sector. Consumer durable is second sector that we've given up everything. Paints the third sector. We've given up everything. The competitive intensity is going up dramatically. I don't think we have much left in that. FMCG now, by and large, we booked quite a bit of profits. Only two companies remain in our portfolios at this point of time. So that's one place we've given up. The industrial companies, we're still holding on because I think that's a good place and we'll add on to good industrial companies. And we like stories like, you know, let's take unfolding today, like Suven is unfolding, buy out of Advent. If you can get it at the same price of Advent, I think you could make a decent return as the history has shown that buyouts typically give a good return in the first year. By second year, it may peter out as what's happened in maybe, you know, EPL or JB Pharma, etc. So one year good return you should get when you come out of this. So I think that's roughly where we've done plus commodities, uh, hold banks as hold, uh, minus consumer durables, minus cement, minus paint. Automobile is hold at this point of time. Definitely it's a hold. Uh, industrial sector is a plus at this point of time. So that's where we are moving our portfolios to. I, I distinctly remember, Ajay, we had a conversation on chemicals and you did have a view on, uh, I think it was GHCL, if my memory serves me right. What is your view on chemicals, names like GHCL, given that the news from China on the COVID front is flaring up again? See, GHCL, if you remember, it was a story of restructuring. You know, story of demerger, it was a very low PE ratio and they were uh, demerging the textile business out and becoming a sodash. 
and that story played out very well. Investors, all of us made good returns, but the story is finished now. The demerge is almost last stage. Price discovery has happened. So I'm not sure a pure soda story is one where you like to bank yourself on. It's a pure commodity at the end of the day. It may make money sometime, may not make money. So I think, you know, soda ash kind of stuff, we just need to move out of it for the time being. Specialty chemicals, I think it's a good place to be, but you got entry right in the stock. You know, they're very expensive stocks. They have corrected. But whether it is the means, whether the specialty chemical like SRF equivalent or whether, I think you need to wait it out to get a good entry point. The idea in specialty chemical is, you know, there are pockets of one to two years with a tremendous amount of money. If you, you know, and a lot of people say you can't time the market, you can't time do that, but you need to time the specialty chemical. There's no point buying at a high because they will give you very strong negative returns. Specialty chemicals, extremely good, but watch the entry point. You know, don't worry, you will not buy the lows, but keep waiting to see what happens to sector. I would still say, give it another quarter. It'll, by the next year or something, you should have a good entry point. Right now, it's too expensive to buy any of the specialty chemical players in India. Just a few days to go and we'll be stepping into a brand new year. Any New Year's resolutions when it comes to the stock markets or any major regrets that you have for the year gone by by way of, oh damn, I missed out that stock? I think beautiful New Year's resolution was, which I was telling all my viewers and some other channel was about 10 days, 15 days back is, the best thing to do with your money is to spend it on yourself. You buy a stock and you lose money. So imagine, you know, having money, you buy a stock and you have angst at the New Year of having lost money. How much better you could have done is take a holiday, spend the money. So my mantra is for the new year is have money, spend, have money, don't invest. Yeah, you're making that money on the stock market by investing to spend it. So I'm sure that there has to be a strategy on that front, no? Yeah, you know, but you know, at some points of time like this, this month, to buy a stock in the market in India at historical 18,200, 18,600, just made no sense to anybody. As I said, market found a reason to correct. But 18,600 are ridiculous for a country which is going to grow at 5.66% next year. Why would I do that? You know, it's impossible. Interest rate REITs are giving me 9.5%. Integrate gives me 9.5% or 9.8% return on quarter to quarter basis. So why am I going to bet with the index, which is not going to give me more than 6, 7%? So, you know, so there are times and pockets where it just don't make sense to buy. It doesn't matter stock. It doesn't matter which stock is underpriced, not priced. When market goes down, it, everything corrects. So I have those segments is the time when you say, okay, you made some money, now spend on yourself. Made the money and invest in market and lose. Not a bright idea for a new year at least. My resolution still is and should be investors at this point in time. If you made money, spend it. You will get a lot more chances to buy, believe me, in this market. As time unfolds by January, February, you will see the impact of interest rates coming into the economy globally as well as India. And it'll be far starker than most people anticipate. Therefore, high interest rates are going to bite and they're going to bite tremendously the purchasing power. I can guarantee that much. That's a law of economics. Therefore, spend your money on yourself rather than spend on money in stock and someone else made money out of you. Not a good idea for New Year's resolution, right? So, Ajay, given you are striking that cautious note, uh, tell us, uh, tell for our viewers what would be an ideal portfolio allocation at the moment. Equity, debt, REITs, invest, ca invest cash, etc. What would be the ideal mix? See, I'll tell you, <coughs> invest REITs at the end of point of time should be at least 25% of your portfolio at this point of time. For two reasons. One, of course, gives you good returns quarter to quarter. Second is, is very they're liquid, so very easy to get out and get into equities when if, if and when you get a good chance to equities. And they don't run along with equity markets. You know, they are fixed income instruments, so they really run on a separate level altogether. So therefore, I think 25%, in my view, should be an ideal place to be at this point of time. Equities, I keep saying that, you know, 50 to 60% is what should be in equities for anybody. Even we are long, so it's not that we feel the market is going to go down, so we sell everything. That only Michael Burry can do it. He has the guts to do it. We don't have the guts to do with our money or our customers. So I think 60% equity, 25% read, 15% cash, and you are done with a decent and you can sleep peacefully and exploit opportunities like what we mentioned today. There's a buyout announcement today. Now, if you want to ride along with the PE fund, it's a good time. Like Ambuja came up to you. You know, you could have bet along with Adani at the same price in Ambuja Cement and give a in spite of poor market, give a very handsome return. Uh, commodities, I still believe you have every correction, deep correction should be a place to buy. World cannot exist without copper or aluminum, no matter what anybody says. 
So you need to buy. So 60, 25, 15 in cash, and you will have a good time with your life and make good returns of the portfolio. But the key is book your profit. That cash in the bank is what makes the difference. Is cash on the paper just gives angst, more and more angst. Okay, so that's the take coming on the portfolio allocation. But you talked about how sector churn is important, how one needs to be very nimble with it. IT has been one space which has been uh, down throughout the year. Does it now warrant a fresh look and perhaps something that we should buy at lower levels given the uh, you know opportunity that you've been talking about? The IT is a sector which we keep telling customers buy directly as stocks, do not buy as mutual funds. And the reason being, Mutual fund diversify their portfolio. So India, two, three companies make all the returns in IT. But a mutual fund typically buys all six, seven shares because it's diversify, etc. So you'll never make money, never make decent money if you're going by IT mutual fund. If you buy IT stocks and, you know, they have corrected quite substantially, you can buy some. I keep saying India's story cannot be divorced without IT. And that's the honest answer. And the good part is good dividends, good buybacks, good ship promote returns. Use of cash is the best, which is give it back to the investors to do what they feel like. You know, no better sector than this, which is steady earnings, globally sized companies, not small size companies, globally sized companies. Uh, market will go up and down, but the need of IT companies is still in tremendous. The rest of the world still is catching up on technology. So is India is done. And you saw what happened in Ames in Delhi, cybersecurity and et cetera. And banks have to be the biggest customer. Indian banks haven't spent much money. The big spend is going to come now. So IT, I would say, definite buy, must keep in the portfolio, but buy only top two, three names and buy in stocks, not via mutual funds. That's the only thing is mutual funds will always destroy your earnings because they diversify. In IT, you don't need to diversify. You can be focused and make good returns. You know, look at this way. Tata Group's whole fortune, investment plan, everything depends upon that one company. They will not let it go down or go under for any reason whatsoever. So if you are betting along with Tata's, what better to bet with their own flagship company or an Infosys or whatever. I'm not recommending any name, but I'm just saying these are fantastic companies and a good correction is a good place to be in, and but hold the stocks, not the mutual funds. Okay, every year I've seen or every 12, 18 months, the market style changes. Let's say this year it is value. Before that it was growth at literally any price, to the point in time when it was pure dividend yield. 2023, considering that same time next year, we'll be talking about elections. We will be talking about, uh, you know, a lot of internal events rather than external events. What style of the market is favorable? Could it be value? Could it be growth? Could it be dividend investing? You know, I don't know how to say this, but the only style of market I like is the style which makes you money as investors. You know, and that's the key point that how do you book your back profit in the bank? So, you know, and it can't be a one of the two styles. You got to be a combination like let's take commodities, high dividends and potential growth rate, but high risk investment. So I'm not sure whether a corrected commodity stock falls in value, falls in dividend or which bucket does it fall in? But certainly it falls in a bucket. That's a critical thing. And therefore you'll make money. So my guess is that the style has to be not relating to the sectors or the way you classify companies. Style should relate to the fact that are you in a company which has got, you know, investing for P expansion or investing for profit expansion and growth. I think that's the way I would divide the line as investors. Because if you invest in a P expansion mode concept, then the need to book profit becomes more urgent and critical. If you're buying because the company is supposed to grow and profit supposed to grow and so on, you can take a much longer runway and keep your investments going. So I would classify, you know, instead of value and thing, I would say just tick mark in your mind. Are you buying this for a P expansion that, you know, there'll be more buyers of stock and I'm buying it cheap, but not because profits, of the company are going to go up. Or are you buying because profits, of the company are going to go up or companies going to grow sales growth, market share, whatever name, what you in which case your runway becomes longer. So, I would say style should be at this point of time by the growth companies on the sales line. Profit growth would be very difficult. Sales growth is a better number because if they can grow their sales in an economy growing at 6%, they will make profits eventually. But if they can't grow sales, then the profit growth will not last very long. So I would say sales growth style 
should be the best way for handling Indian market because companies who can grow sales, they are taking up market share in, a, in an economy growing at 6%. And that should be the best bet. So whether you find good value or not there, but I still say high growth in sales should be the number one criteria for style of investing in 2023 because those companies will be the winners in the market. So a mix of strategies is what you need to employ in 2023. But of course, a high sales growth is something you need to watch out for. We'll let you go on that note. Appreciate you joining us, Ajay. Thank you. And Have a wonderful greeting. New Year's. Same here, same to you as well. Um, season's greeting as well as wishing you a very happy new year from the entire ET Now family. Thank you.